when something is controversial, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Some people even use controversies to build their careers and reach legendary status by taking a road less traveled by and starting conversations on topics that before them no one dared to start, they instigated changes that led to the world we live in today. In this video, we will go through some cases when Digimon creators made decisions that were either not received well or were too hard to digest. Hikari Taichi Koramon Love Triangle you probably remember episode 21 of the first adventure, when we got a glimpse of the human world for the first time after the kids went to the digital world. We found out many interesting things in this episode, like how time flows differently in the two worlds. We also met Hikari, Taichi's younger sister, who later became one of our favorite chosen kids. This episode was directed by Mamoru Hosoda, a Japanese animator and director, nominated for an Academy Award for the Best Animated Feature Film. In an interview about this episode, laughing through his words, Hosoda explained what he wanted to achieve. Set in an oppressing atmosphere, the episode had different meanings depending on the age of the viewer. He said children would probably see the story as a caring bond between a brother and a sister, but for adults, it could have a somewhat erotic feeling. He even compared it to, quote, peeking at an intercourse from the outside in the middle of the afternoon. We could even go as far as to say that the episode is a love triangle between Koromon, Hikari and Taichi, end of quote. Hosoda then went on to explain a scene where Hikari and Koromon are at the table eating watermelon, but Hikari is not having a single bite. Hosoda said that this was symbolism for a conversation between a wife and her husband's young mistress, where the wife is willing to give the mistress anything in exchange for her husband. Considering the protagonists in this storyline are underage, to call this controversial would be an understatement. Disturbing, at least. Certain designs There are over one and a half thousand Digimon designs, each special in their own way. Considering they sought inspiration from under every rock, it was bound to happen that some designs end up trying too hard or just being plain bad. Or the source for their design was something from history that is considered a controversial topic to this day. For example, there is a Hitler Agumon. Although not considered as an official Digimon, he did appear in the Japanese version of the digital card game and was a Digimon you could play against. Among the so many Agumon variants, this one was obviously inspired by Adolf Hitler. He has the same mustache and hairdo. Considering how this historical figure affected so many lives and the history of the world, adding this Digimon was guaranteed to cause a public outroar. The creators went further and made a concentration camp with thousands of Agumon with numbers on their foreheads. Another example would be Venusmon. Anime fans are used to characters being over-sexualized, there is nothing new about that. As for Digimon, the creators openly said that no matter how many human characteristics a Digimon might have, they always have something to remind the public that they are not human. Like the helmets on Angemon and Angevumon, wings, vampire teeth, plants growing from their bodies, horns, metal body parts, etc. But then comes Venusmon. Except for the white cloth covering her eyes, this Digimon looks entirely human, especially nowadays with the popularity of body modifications and enlarging certain parts of the body. So, if someone wanted to, they could easily make a perfect cosplay of this Digimon. Sexualizing Digimon is not exclusive to females though, there is Gankomon with a noticeably bulky part of his body. As in the case of Venusmon, with the right clothes and body build, a human could pass for this Digimon. It will be interesting to see if these Digimon get toned down in future media. In my video about censorship in Digimon, I spoke about one Digimon who was censored in a video game in the West because the design was based on a nun with a gun. Some people say that censorship is in the past, but Sistermon Noir was censored again in the new card game. There are more examples of controversy in Digimon designs, but as I said in the beginning of the video, the opinion whether something is controversial or not is individual. Fight against cancel culture We have all witnessed recently how cancel culture can be a double-edged sword. In 2021, Digimon Tamer's screenwriter Chiaki J. Konaka created a live script-reading play for the anime's 20th anniversary. Konaka later explained that he had once pitched an official sequel to Tamer's, set 20 years later, but it was turned down, so he conceived the play as a continuation of the story instead. The story of the play was set in the modern day, where the Tamers are reunited to fight against a new villain called political correctness that threatens the real and digital worlds. 
He is described as the greatest problem facing the internet and media because he is forcing people to conform to a single value system. As the play progresses, political correctness takes on a physical form and launches into a special attack called cancel culture. In addition to creating the play, Konaka also talked against the exclusion of alternative claims about the recent pandemic, which were not scientifically backed and were rather controversial. Even though in the beginning he deleted comments that criticized him, in the end, Konaka admitted that the words he used were controversial and apologized for creating a divisive story. He carried the bride. Speaking of Konaka, one of the best and most talked about episodes of Zero Two was written by him. However, the episode with the Dark Ocean caused some stir among the fans. In the episode, after Hikari helped some Digimon in the Dark Ocean, she was almost kidnapped. The shadowy figures told her that she is going to be their bride and create new offspring. Even though that was only talked about and never actually happened, Hikari was still a child, so even writing these lines was taking it too far. Parting with old fans The Digimon franchise is now over 20 years old. For each anniversary, the creators are releasing something new, whether it's an anime, a game or some other goodie. While it takes us 20 minutes to finish one episode, the work behind it is much longer and harder. The company behind Digimon is still a company though, and they have to make profit from the work they put in, so the company needs to be very careful in what they invest their time and money. They have to keep coming up with interesting content that not only retains old fans, but also attracts new ones, but it seems like at one point, attracting new fans seemed to be the priority. This caused some discontent among old fans. Some decisions made in the past few years in the Digimon franchise seem to follow a pattern of trying to part with old fans and welcome new ones. First came Kizuna, a beautifully stylized movie about the chosen children growing up and letting their partner Digimon go. It felt like this was not just about those children letting go, but a message to the old fans to let go as well. Then came the reboot of the most popular Digimon release, the original adventure. The aim to attract new kids and gradually face out old fans seemed even more real. But the reality is that we live in the age of mass production and new anime are getting released every day, so it is highly unlikely for kids today to watch Digimon for the first time and get attached. Why would they, when they can move on to the next thing as soon as tomorrow? The fact is that old fans are still loving Digimon and they are the main audience for whatever gets released next. In 2016, the company tried to reinvent Digimon. They created an anime called Appmon to stay up to date with the modern times, where apps are a big part of our daily life. Even though it was part of the Digimon franchise, it was created in a way that it could have survived on its own. But around that time, the original adventure was getting a sequel in form of five movies, featuring all the original characters and Digimon, and the new game called Cyber Sleuth, attracting all fans to revive their interest in the franchise. So Appmon couldn't stand ground to the original characters and eventually it failed, proving the point that the Digimon fanbase is still made up of old fans. What do you think about these points? Was there anything that shocked, annoyed or disturbed you while watching Digimon? Share your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Stay tuned for more Digimon videos. P.S. Make sure to follow my community page on YouTube as I also post updates about upcoming videos there.